All right, looks like we're live. Okay, so like I was saying, I'm just going to read the, the, the scriptures for, uh, this is Saturdays, I believe. I believe, yeah, Saturdays. And it's going to be Psalm 132 through 134. And then First uh, Corinthians 11, verses 17 through 34. I believe we're finishing that chapter on this one. So I know you can see it on your screen. I have to bring up the actual page so I can see it. You should read that way. All right, so um, Father, I just ask that you bless the reading and the hearing of your word. Help us to grow from it, to learn from it, and have the discernment to share it with others. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I know it's a quick prayer, and I apologize, but I want to get through these because it's already 840 so we can get caught up again. For the handful of people that actually watch these <laughs> and i appreciate you i do because that's the only reason why i do this it's not so i can get popular or get likes it's that i can share the word with someone so it's the eternal dwelling of god in zion if you hear a buzzing sound that's my nail file my electronic nail file that you know like a drill thing and the kitties are playing with it and they're trying to kill it but i'm getting them used to that sound so they you know different sounds so they're not so skittish so like if god forbid they ever have to be shaved with clippers they'll recognize that buzzing sound and not be afraid this is also why one of my cats toby is absolutely not afraid of the vacuum cleaner he'll just lay there and watch me vacuum while the others run for the hills <laughs> but yeah they keep slapping it because <laughs> it's cute i did it i posted a video about that anyway let's do this the eternal dwelling of god in zion a song of ascents. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions, how he swore to the Lord and vowed to the mighty one of Jacob. Surely I will not go into the chamber of my house or go up to the comfort of my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find a place for the Lord, a dwelling place for the mighty one of Jacob. Behold, we heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of the woods. Let us go into his tabernacle. Let us worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your strength. Let your priests be clothed with righteousness, and let your saints shout for joy. For your servant David's sake, do not turn away the face of your anointed. The Lord has shown in truth to David. He will not turn from it. I will set upon your throne the fruit of your body. If your sons will keep my covenant and my testimony, which I shall teach them, their sons also shall sit upon your throne forevermore. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it for his dwelling place. This is my resting place forever. Here I will dwell, for I have desired it. I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. I will also clothe her priests with salvation and her saints shall shout aloud for joy. There I will make the horn of David grow. I will prepare a lamp for my anointed. His enemies I will clothe with shame. But upon himself his crown shall flourish. And Psalm one, Psalms, sorry, Psalms 133. Blessed unity of the people of God, a song of ascents of David. Baby, you need to move that. Sorry. A song of a sense of David. Psalm 133. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. And then Psalms 134 is praising the Lord in his house at night, a song of ascents. Behold, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord, who by night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord. The Lord who made heaven and earth. 
bless you from Zion. And then you can see the footnotes, which I will go ahead and copy those and put them in the description just in case any of y'all saw those and to know what they meant. I'm sure you don't need them because it's kind of, you know, it's, uh, yeah. But anyways, just in case, there. And it will post it here on there in the meantime now. All right, and then the other was going to be uh, 1 Corinthians 11, 19 through, or 17 through 34. It's right in front of me. What am I doing? Okay, so let me change this. 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians. Really? Really? Since when, Bible Gateway, do you not let me... There we go. First, oh, I turned my keyboard off. That's what I was. Because <laughs> the kittens were lurking around. I didn't want them to jump on my keyboard. First Corinthians 11, 14 through, wow, I forgot again. <sighs> 34? 17 through 34. Oh, I see. I wish I did drugs. At least I'd have an excuse then for being such a dig bat. But unfortunately, I was born with it. Watch out, babe. Watch out, babe. Oh, uh, are you, you make it, you, you're doing a squishy like your mommy did. Oh, these little dusters that I get. They're chemical free, but they're just dusters. And their mama, when she was a kitten, started nursing it because she got taken from her mama really too soon. And she still wanted to nurse, so she, I called it her squishy. And one of her babies just found one that I brought in because some of them bug me at night because they want lovey. And I'm not their mama, so I just noticed that the little boy is like weaving biscuits on the, weaving baskets on the floor and he's finding spots to nurse on that squishy. That makes me so happy. Even though they have their mama, they're old enough that she kicks them away from them, though. So. Anyway, continuing on. 1 Corinthians 11, 17 through 34. New King James Version only. One of these times I'm going to do it in Hebrew for you. <laughs> Conduct at the Lord's Supper. Now, in giving these instructions, I do not praise you, since you come together, not for the better, but for the worse. For first of all, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and in part I believe it. For there must also be factions among you, that those who are approved may be recognized among you. Therefore, when you come together in one place, it is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, each one takes his own supper ahead of others, and one is hungry and another is drunk. What? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in, or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. Institution of the Lord's Supper, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Examine yourself. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself. No, baby, you can't come up here right now. No, no, no. What did I say? Did I say no? I don't think, I think that's what I said. I didn't say, please walk on my computer. Okay. Sorry. 
29. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. And we'll see what H is in the footnotes here, so you'll know. I'm sure you already do. But For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are ourselves. I'm oh, sorry, but when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, my brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home, lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. And H. Yeah, we do that. They are already sleeping means they're dead. You know, just like Lazarus. Oh, he is only sleeping. Oh, well, if he's sleeping, then he'll recover. No, Lazarus is dead. Remember that? Yeah. Okay, so that was uh, Saturday's reading. I hope it didn't stop recording because I'm not seeing my screen. Oh, phew. I would have cried. Okay, so that's that one. You see how much shorter they are? Remember? But one thing I am going to share, I'm going to go find it on my computer before I bring the next one up, is um, a teaching. At, I won't share my video because my video was where I got my information from uh, uh, Jonathan Cotton and from Emir Sarfati, both of them Jewish. And they explained how when he broke the bread, which is his body, he was also making a, a he was he was making a betrothal with us. Because when any time a groom wanted to become betrothed to his future wife, they would break bread together and then he would hand her a cup of wine. If she took it and drank from it, that means she accepts his proposal. And they are then considered, back in the day of Jesus, they were then considered married in every way, except that which brings children. But they would not live together for at least a year, because after, the, after that, and the dowry was paid to her father, and the dowry was actually something that was put aside, so if in case the husband dies, there's something to take care of the widow. That's what the dowry was about. It wasn't to pay the father for his daughter. Because that sounds like prostitution, if you ask me. No, it was something that, that was being put back and kept safe for her. In case something happens to her husband, she will have it to help her. Because, you know, more chances are her dad will be dead before her husband, you know. But anyways, I will find that video, that teaching that I have from Jonathan Kahn. I have the video somewhere. I mean, the DVD, but I'll put it in the, I'll, I'll attach it to this in the comments or whatever, in the description. Uh, it'll teach you that whenever uh, Jesus broke the bread and said, take, eat, this is my body. Of course, he's making a new covenant with us. Amen. But at the same time, when he took the, the cup and he says, I will not drink of this cup again until I drink it anew with you in heaven. Right. And when he handed the cup to his disciples, he said, here, take and drink for this is my blood that is spilled out for you. Right. And at the same time, he was betrothing. He was becoming betrothed to us as if we were his bride. We are not. We are like considered the bride of Christ. And also, we're also the church. But and when you think about the ten virgins, they weren't bride. They were bridesmaids. They were not brides waiting to hopefully get to marry the bridegroom. He didn't have ten women waiting to hopefully for him to marry all ten. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of teachers preach it in such a way that I used to think that. I used to think that they were all going to get to marry the bridegroom, but five didn't get to because they weren't prepared, right? But anyways, I will share his video. I actually I'll share Amir Sarfati's. I'm I'm a little skeptical of John Con lately because he's a lot on. Uh, uh, Jim Baker and so and, and Daystar and there's a lot of folks on there that preach do false doctrine and so I don't really want to be associated with that and so I'm kind of on the fence with Jonathan Kahn now but I will share what Amir Sofati taught about the Jewish wedding and what this particular part of where is talking about the communion and, and you know sharing his body as bread as body and blood as you know they, all that what was actually happening there other than the new covenant obviously so I'll end this now, and I will get that video, and I'll attach it in the, in the either in the comments or in the comment. And yeah, and it'd be, it would behoove you to go watch it uh, from Amir Sarfati. Shalom. I'll be back in a bit. Quit knocking.